Super Mario 64 is a very broken video game. In a normal playthrough, you're only supposed to reach the end after collecting at least 70 of the game's 120 unique power stars. But over the years, speedrunners have been able to lower that requirement from 70 stars down to 50, to 31, to 16, to 1, to 0. This is accomplished by skipping past star doors, which require a specific amount of power stars to open, primarily by using one of the most infamous exploits in gaming history, the Backwards Long Jump, or the BLJ for short. By repeatedly long jumping backwards up staircases, steep slopes, in between stair steps, low ceilings, or while riding ascending elevators, Mario can build up a ton of backward speed, enough to completely bypass the star doors and the endless stairs leading to the final Bowser level. The BLJ has allowed speedrunners to beat the game in less than 8 minutes while only collecting one or no stars. But what if it didn't exist? Well, in 1997, Nintendo would release an updated version of the game in Japan known as the Shindu version, which also happens to be the version used in the recently released 3D All-Stars collection on the Nintendo Switch. The Shindu version is notorious for having patched the BLJ by adding a speed cap to Mario's backward speed, which was absent in the original, likely by accident. Because of this, you can no longer build up speed by doing BLJs, and it seems like beating the game with less than 70 stars isn't possible on the Shindu version. Except that it is. In fact, it is possible to beat Mario 64 with a single star without the BLJ, and I'm going to explain how. For this explanation, I'm going to be referencing this Tool Assisted Speedrun, or TAS for short, which for those unaware, is a speedrun created in an emulator, advanced frame by frame with precise inputs in order to create a theoretical, perfect speedrun. TASs often use tricks that are physically impossible for a human to pull off, but it showcases what a machine can accomplish without the use of cheats or memory modification. This task beats the game with only one star on the Shindu version, and I'm going to explain the run from start to finish, as well as how the major skips are possible without the BLJ. On screen right now are the authors of the TAS, and you can find their links to their YouTube channels in the description below. Now, without further ado, let's get started. At the start, Mario enters the castle after skipping Lakitu. Here, Mario is faced with his first major obstacle, the 8-star door. This door leads to the first Bowser level, which needs to be beaten in order to get the key to access the basement. In the original version, this star door can be skipped by building up hyperspeed by BLJing under a low ceiling inside of a pillar next to this staircase out of bounds. From there, Mario can be navigated out of bounds, up the stairs, right past the door. But since we can't build up hyperspeed using BLJs on Shindu, we must find a different method to do so. In order to accomplish this as fast as possible, the TAS instead enters bob -omb Battlefield, which doesn't seem to make a lot of sense at first, since you don't even collect a star here in a one-star speedrun. But this part of the route is actually pretty important. Here in bob -omb Battlefield, there's a place where Mario can build up the speed required to pass through the door, and it can be found right here, on this rock to the left of the chain chunk, specifically this slope. This is a slippery slope, a type 0x13 slippery slope to be precise, and it is the main component for performing a technique known as C-Up Hyperspeed. Whenever you press the C-Up button in Mario 64, you enter a pseudo first-person mode where you can look around and tilt Mario's head. Normally, when a player does this, they are standing still. If this action is somehow performed while Mario is moving on the ground, Mario will slow to a complete stop before entering the pseudo first person mode. When done on the slippery slope, however, Mario will not slow down. In fact, he will do the opposite. When facing in the correct direction while Mario is facing downhill, Mario will continue to build up speed while he's sliding on it. The acceleration is uncapped, allowing for hyperspeed to be reached. Okay, so that's cool and all, but how are we supposed to keep that speed once Mario leaves the slippery slope, let alone use the hyperspeed to clip past the 8-star door, which isn't even on the same map as bob -omb Battlefield? Well, in order to do just that, we need to conserve the speed after leaving the slope, and somehow maintain it while exiting the level. Here's how it's done in the TAS. Firstly, Mario needs to head straight to this fence. When Mario grabs a ledge at high speed, he will normally fall, but on the first frame before Mario is put in a falling state, 
Mario begins the ledge grab animation. And it is on this specific frame that the magic happens. On this frame, the game can be paused and the course can be exited. After exiting bob on Battlefield, the following actions are done in order to conserve the hyperspeed. On the very first frame of spawning back into the castle lobby, the task presses the Z button and then the B button immediately after in order to perform a slide kick and conserve the speed. The slide kick is then cancelled immediately while holding back on the control stick. On the next frame, the control stick input is held in the neutral position before A is pressed so Mario jumps on the next frame. This is to prevent the hyperspeed from being cancelled by accidentally doing a side flip. Mario then leaps forward towards the 8-star door at hyperspeed, and he's in! Mario has officially entered the first Bowser level with zero stars, without the BLJ. Mario then jumps and kicks his way through the dark world, using some tasks only swag along the way, such as frame walking up and through this bottom of the central platform before facing off against Bowser for the first time. Here, Bowser decides to dance, which has about a 10% chance of happening at the start of the fight. Mario then defeats him and obtains the key to the basement. Since Mario cannot exit through the star door since he has no stars, he re-enters the Bowser stage and immediately exits course to spawn back into the castle lobby in order to reach the basement. Upon reaching the basement, Mario is faced with the 30 star door. However, since this is a different map than on the lobby, Mario cannot simply build up hyperspeed in another level and then conserve it all the way into the basement to skip this door. A different method has to be used and that is where the first frame wall kicks, or firsties for short, come into play. When Mario wall kicks against the surface on the first frame possible, he conserves whatever speed he had before the wall kick. When the control stick is held in the air, Mario will travel in that direction and gain more speed, and unlike horizontal speed on the ground, there is no limit, meaning that building up speed in between firsties and continuing to perform only firsties, Mario can build up hyperspeed. It is through this method in which the 30 star door is skipped. Building up hyperspeed using firsties was also how the Tassers originally skipped the 8 star door in the castle lobby, before the faster C up hyperslide method was discovered and developed by Tyler Ken, SuperDevo0001, and the others. You may also notice that Mario begins to stop performing firsties only back and forth after a bit, and begins the wall jump everywhere. This is an optimization that the Tassers came up with so Mario can clip past the 30 star door as fast as possible. After clipping through the door, Mario enters Dire Dire Docks in order to collect the only star in the run, Bored Bowser's Sub. The task plays through the level almost the same as a human would, only with much tighter movement and more advanced camera manipulation strats in order to reduce the massive amount of lag caused by the many objects throughout the level, including the submarine. After collecting the sub star, the watery painting recedes to reveal the entrance to the second Bowser level. The task manages to skip the majority of the fire sea by performing enough firsties up the elevator shaft in order to wall kick up these two pillars and then precisely on nothing. Bruh. Bowser is then beaten effortlessly and the key to the upstairs has been acquired. After obtaining the key, the task enters back into the fire sea in order to exit course so Mario spawns back into the castle lobby so he can reach the upstairs. Up there remains two more obstacles, the 50 star door and the endless stairs. In the original game, these are by far the easiest skips, since the BLJ is very easy to pull off in these locations. In Shindu, however, we have to build up hyperspeed using firsties once again. The technique used to clip through the 50 star door is very similar to skipping the 30 star door, only this time, this sequence of firsties are going to chain into another sequence of firsties, in order to maintain the hyperspeed required to skip both the 70 star door and the endless stairs. In addition, once Mario lands on the staircase, the task inputs a punch at a precise time in order to cancel the hyperspeed. This is necessary so that Mario can jump right into the final level entrance as quickly as possible without overshooting it. Going through the final Bowser level, the task travels down a route not unlike a human would, only with the most optimized movement and lag reduction strats possible. The only thing left is Bowser, who must be thrown into the bombs three times. One, two, so long, gay. <clears throat> I mean, buh bye. With King Koopa finally bested, the task completes the Super Mario 64 Shindu version in 7 minutes, 32 seconds, 
and 770 milliseconds while collecting only one star and performing zero BLJs. An amazing showcase on how far Super Mario 64 can be pushed to its limits, even without its most broken glitch. With all that being said, I can imagine some of you still have some questions regarding the run, such as, is it possible to beat the game with zero stars without BLJs? And can I beat the game with one star without BLJs? Well, to answer the first question, yes. The Shindu version of Mario 64 can be beaten with no stars whatsoever. The reason there isn't a task for it, however, is that it is much slower. Like in regular Mario 64, Dire Dire Docks can be skipped with enough hyperspeed. However, since the only way to build up the hyperspeed necessary to skip Dire Dire Docks is much greater than just skipping the 30 star door, more firsties have to be pulled off, and by the time Mario builds up enough speed, the 1 star BLJ tasks will be fighting Bowser. Therefore, no one has expressed much interest in making one. To answer the other question, unless science advances to the point where you can get robotic arms to allow you to consistently nail frame-perfect inputs and precise control stick angles, I don't think humans are going to be able to complete a run in this category anytime soon. For the time being, this task and any other subsequent improvements shall suffice. Before I wrap things up, I want to give a shout out to the Tassers, notably MK Dasher, who granted me permission to use footage of the TAS in this video, and answered any questions that I had, as well as the other Tassers. Links to their YouTube channels, as well as the TAS, are in the description below. If you're interested in learning more about Super Mario 64 mechanics or TASs, feel free to check out Yukikipedia, the wiki page for all SM64 knowledge, as well as Pan Koek's YouTube channels. If you enjoyed this episode of Lowest Percent, consider leaving a like and subscribing to the channel for more high-quality speedrunning content. Also feel free to check out my solo channel, Lunatic J, for some more cool speedrunning content, such as the history of the BLJ, or my most recent one on Mario 3D All-Stars. Thanks for watching, and until then, I'll see you around for another episode. Later.